The girl who loved birds, loved to play in pavement cracks, searching for momentary flowers, but she couldn't hide her wings. Others picked on her ruthlessly until she became plucked, bare as chicken flesh before the great boiling cauldron of the world. Choice. The goddess wants what she wants. White stag, peacock feathers, a child in her name. It's not about what you want. You are the stage actor and she the living backdrop. You can only repeat her patterns, feel the pain of too much love, dress her desires and devices like an underskin. Do not wear black or red, these offend her. Choose oceanic colors, the scent of tangerine cascading through a realm of plenty. Remember, you never had any choice. It was the price of bliss. A Golden Hunger She wanted the most dangerous ambrosia, whatever the radical deities were willing to bestow. A nightshade salad, whatever could harm and heal, destroy and make better, bring her to the edge of the hallucinatory cliff. Third eye ablaze, she could barely touch his forehead alone and not take in the blue of him. His brink-checked life brought on transcendent appetite. She wanted to overdrink every last drop before the gods to wear the headdresses of near-vanquished goddesses in a secret piazza at high noon devour the illustrious fruits of a clandestine religion. Together they would trove the seven wonders beneath fervent stars, taste the siren song infused in wine, and be led elsewhere in lieu of a crime. Pheasant. By the side of a country road, I find a pheasant, plumage gleaming, sunstruck in the afternoon, eyes closed like two half-shells on a beach. An emerald crown adorns his head, royal blue and violet paint his cheeks, cardinal red cloaks his eyes like a mask at Mardi Gras, burnt sienna with flecks of cream colors the length of his body. Ochre and yellow oxide tinge his wings. Beside the noble beak, I see the only sign of wreckage. Three fresh drops of blood on the road, cherry red for an artist's palette. How elegant, how fragile, vulnerable and proud, this avian aesthete return to the source of his kind. Elf Owl, tiniest of the owl family, I picture you protected under a fairy's wing, not burrowed inside a tall cactus, hiding from the enemy, sun. White-eyebrowed, you appear venerable, though your lifespan is a mere three to six years. You subsist on blind snakes, the tasty insides of insects, Spiny lizards and scorpions, stingers removed before consumption. The desert wasn't always your home. Ten thousand year old bones tell of a time among evergreens when overheating didn't threaten your lightness. Raven Hang Glider, Lillooet, British Columbia. Above the azure waters floats a raven, caught in a rough confluence of air, never flapping his wings, just letting them rock him back and forth, twisting and turning. The mountains look on, the salmon paws in their struggle. The raven reaches back to deepest memory, 
earliest time when raven made the tides by throwing sand in the face of a guardian elder and she dropped the tide line forevermore nowadays flying and trickery require much more effort the guardians are almost extinct the voyage from sea post to tree so fatiguing and he calls upon the wind O oh, wind, please carry me over the tide, that I may rest my wings. Note to the Queen of the Underworld Dear Persephone, I miss you, but you destroy me. Every autumn the pull to the underworld is extra strong. Burnt orange leaves dance around me, forming a crown. I visit the cemetery often, avoid men with the mark of hell. Yesterday a hawk sailed across my window, and I know I am moving somewhere else reluctantly. Regards. Afterlife for David you wanted to go to your death queen. Tapestries of red, black, white, Egyptian cotton unfold before you, and you travel forward, spirit gliding like a self, ether escape from a bottle. If he gets lost in the underworld, tell him to look for the moon, says a voice. But you aren't lost, we're never illusions fool, and know which direction to take. To the west, at the end of a long hallway, Callie's altar holds vigil. Tea lights dot the marble floor where you tumble out, cross the star lines, and return to her. Athena Threshold If I can hold her light, if I can forego the palace of perfection, and wear her armor so it lets me be free. The snakes will form an undetected shield to traverse the infinite city with laser beam eye and Amazon's flare, the last woman to be ensnared. To Athena, I never felt much connection to you, warrior goddess, until you wrestled me away from Persephone, her infinite seasons in hell, your shield and helmet a golden flash in a blur of darkness. I never felt much kinship to you, impervious one, a love of owls, that was it. Your armor signifying invulnerability, the power to set clear boundaries and say no, fend off the overwhelm of others. It was never you, Athena, until I put the armor on, or rather it grafted itself to me, and I bloomed metallic. Elysium. The blue door at the end of the threshold is always there. Once opened, you can never return to the old ground. The world, a stranger's hand grasping throat, relaxes its hold. Illusory curses from Maya, the travesty of death, rebirth, an equal arm cross to bear, longing for the Elysian fields in the month of the sunflowers. Dream of Xenial this androgynous being has transcended. Iris behind St. Michael, the rainbow's reflection on her mottled skin. Not quite corporeal, as she floats above a lake of fire, wings tending downward. A descendant of the Watchers, her kind joining the ranks of an angelic penal colony in the fifth circle of heaven. What would those wings be like to touch? White feathers crumple into charcoal at the slightest brush. Dream of Xenial. 